more brand new skill tools, this time with cords. So Skill has released a complete new line of shop tools now. Now they have an eight inch bench grinder, we have a scroll saw, we have a band saw, and we have a drill press. Let's dive in, take a closer look at each one of these, talk about features, and we'll talk about pricing and warranty with each one of them as well, and then we'll come back and wrap this thing up. First up, we have the new Skill 3 amp 8 inch bench top grinder or bench grinder. So we have an 8 inch wheel obviously on each side. It comes set up with a 36 grit wheel on the left hand side and a 60 grit wheel, a finer wheel on the right hand side. I would probably opt to probably pull the fine wheel off and, uh, and throw a wire brush on there. I just seem to use a wire brush and a coarser wheel more often. Of course that depends on what type of work you're doing and then I'd probably throw that in the toolbox but regardless you get an 8 inch wheel on each side, two grinding wheels. Uh, you also get two acrylic guards here, protect your eyes as well as even one of these that has a magnifying glass built into it which is kind of nice if you're doing fine work here that's, that's nice to have and you can obviously swap these out very quickly just with a thumb screw here and also lock those down to tighten it up. Now max RPM on this is 3450. As I mentioned, eight inch wheel. We get a cooling tray here, so you can put your water in here, and then as you're grinding things, you can cool that off. We also have an integrated LED light right here on the tool as well. And then obviously the uh, bendy straw thing that uh, you can place that light wherever you need it to do your work, which is rather nice. Also, I like the fact we don't have an incandescent bulb there because they like to break and, and bust and uh, anytime you just kind of look at them crazy. Anyway, so I'll spin this up very quiet. Takes a second to spin up. So a few seconds there to spin up. Pretty typical on a bench grinder. Again, you can see on my light here, and put that wherever I need it, and then obviously adjust this as well. Slow that down, I'll go ahead and throw something on here, which by the way, we have a V-groove at an angle right here. We'll go ahead and use the course wheel as well. And to adjust these tool rests rather easily, I uh, just have two thumb screws down here, or one thumb screw on either side, and you can slide that in and out as you need to, and adjust it to your typical less than an eighth inch off of that wheel surface, so that it doesn't like to grab things. Just flip it around real quick, show you the back side of the machine, nothing special there. Uh, rubber feet on this, so it grips the surface nicely and sits there and doesn't vibrate much so uh, not a lot of vibration on this um, again takes a few seconds to spin up and a few seconds to to uh, slow down and stop which again is pretty typical on any bench grinder so you do have to take some care when these things are spinning up and spinning down and when you're grinding obviously uh, and this is available now and it's $149 comes with a three-year warranty and this is the Skill model number BW9501. It's their 2.8 amp, 9 inch, 2 speed bench top band saw. You have a table here that is adjustable uh, at the bevel, as well as you have a sliding miter here as well. Help keep things at a 90 or whatever degree you want to make them, whatever angle you want to make that. You can do so with that thumb screw and uh, be able to slide here and make your cuts. You can also adjust the foot right here just by loosening this back thumb screw and then you can raise this up and down. Use the pinion gear to do so so you can keep that blade nice and stable. 
If you want to keep it low or if you're cutting something thicker, you can raise that up and then lock that down and that locks that into place. To open the door here to access the pulley, just turn this about a quarter turn and you can open this up and now you have access to your pulley and your blade tension is right here. Flip this up, a couple of screws to tighten it or turn it counterclockwise to loosen it, lock it back down and that sets the tension on the blade. Flip this around here and you can set uh, the left and right trueness of the blade just by loosening this up and making turns here. So left is left, right is right, and then lock that back down. So you can basically adjust that run out of the blade. And then as I mentioned earlier, this is what's locking that foot down right here. Kind of gives you a nice picture description of what's going on as well as your blade tension right here. Shut the door, lock that down. That's locked into place. We also have a window right here where we can look in and see what's going on inside there as well. Now let's take a look at this lower half. Just as on the top, we can turn this knob about a quarter turn and have access to the lower pulley as well. Now it's going to ride stationary, not stationary, obviously it's going to spin, uh, but there's no adjustability here. All the adjustability is up on the top side. We do have a pulley and a belt that is driving this wheel here, which is then in turn driving the blade. Now under here, you can see the pinion uh, that the actual table runs on here. So basically we loosen these two thumb screws and then we can adjust the bevel and we have an indicator right here that you can obviously set for trueness as well. Uh, that gives you kind of an indication of how many degrees, 20 degrees, 25 degrees, whatever it is you need to set that angle of your table. And then you can clamp these back down and make that nice and stable. But you don't have to just move it by hand which you can absolutely, absolutely do. You can even pull this out. You can pull this out and move the table as well on your own. Or as I mentioned, use it as a pinion gear, which makes it nice Then clamp these down. And I did say there was no adjustment on that lower pulley. There actually is, but it's more of a manual adjustment. Once this is kind of dialed in, I doubt you have to mess with it much. But if you do have to adjust the trueness of that bottom pulley, this is what it's done with right here are these actual bolts and nuts to actually set the run out in and out and side to side of this bottom pulley. And then we have a dust port here as well. So you can hook up your uh, dust extraction or your shop vac and be able to pull out any dust uh, from that lower side. Also wanted to point out uh, that right in there you can see there's two different pulleys there. So you can actually adjust that to run a higher or lower speed and there's also uh, two places for that serpentine belt to ride on this pulley as well or on this wheel so you can adjust that much like you would like a drill press uh, to e either speed that up or slow it down very simple to operate flip the switch up and i can adjust that foot down So you can see there's quite a bit of dust in there that we could have extracted had we had our extractor hooked up to it or shop vac to pull out that dust rather than uh, slinging it around in there and creating a lot of dust on our worktop. This should be available now and it's $239 and comes with a three year warranty. And again, the model number is the BW9501. This is the Skill DP9505, and as you can see, this is a drill press. This is a bench top drill press, meaning it's meant to sit on top of your workbench or your bench top because it's not tall enough to go from the ground. You get a lot of the same features as you would see on a, a full-size drill press. A 6.2 amp motor, uh, adjustable, several different RPM, and we'll, we'll look at the pulleys and the belt here in one moment and talk about adjusting the speed. 
Uh, we get a two inch travel here on the head, uh, full half inch chuck, so we can go as, as high as a half inch. It is a tapered chuck as well. And then we have some crossbeam lasers here uh, that should be able to kind of line up and tell us where our drill bit's gonna hit or whatever it is we're doing to, on our workpiece. It will kind of give us a bullseye, if you will. You get five different speed settings from 610 RPM to 2800 RPM. And again, we'll take a look at that closer here in one moment. And then here on the, uh, the actual work, work top or work table here, uh, you have a crank here that's geared. Uh, so you have a pinion gear where you can drive this up and down. And then you have a folding handle here where you can then lock that piece down and give it some additional stability for you to be able to drill on. Right up here, we can set our travel. So if we don't want a full two inches of travel, we can run this thumb screw down to say an inch, and now we only get an inch of travel. So pretty typical on uh, drill presses, so you can set that. Here on the front, you have a simple on off, as well as we have the laser. So now you see the crossbeam uh, red laser here. And then we also have an LED light that just kind of lights up the area we're working on. Pretty typical and simple chuck here. Open the jaws, set your drill bit, use your key, tighten that down, which by the way, never just tighten it down from one, actually hit all three of them. And it ensures that you're getting those jaws nice and tight and that you're getting equal pressure on all three of those jaws. Put this on. Now we're ready to drill. And by the way, if your laser is off, always test to make sure that wherever your, your X is, that your drill bit is meeting that dead center. If not, you can take these little plates off here and adjust that laser to wherever you need it to be. Pretty easy to do so. Before I do that, I think I'm gonna turn my table. Yeah, now we're hitting the hole. To adjust the speed on this, we loosen this thumb screw here and then we have travel on this motor. You see a spring there and that's going to allow us to now change the pulleys here. And now that we have the thumb screw loose here on the motor and we get some travel, you can see here the travel on this pulley, now we have the ability to put the belt on the different size pulleys and you have your diagrams here showing you to get 2050 RPM. We wanted the second pulley here and the second pulley here, and now we're good. It also gives you uh, some different size drilling into wood, uh, aluminum, zinc, brass, iron, and steel, and tells you based off of what twist drill bit as to what RPM you should be running, kind of your speeds and feeds, if you will. And I love the fact that right here, you can see that there is a holder for that key that gets lost all the time. So make sure you put that back and then it will always be there when you need it. And we also wanna tighten down that motor so now it's locked in and not going to move. The Skill DP9505 10 inch drill press should be available now and runs $199 and you get a three year warranty as well. This is the Skill model number SS9503, and it's their 1.2 amp, 16 inch variable speed scroll saw. Now, in addition to the saw, you also get integrated uh, dust removal, or basically a blower. So you see this little tube running up here, and this metal tube right down here. That's to clear any sawdust or any dust that's accumulating near wherever the cutting surface is. We also have uh, this foot here that's adjustable, we can raise that up and down to where we need it. And you can see that that little blower tube goes with it as well. Now we get a 16 inch throat here. So basically we can cut up to 16 inches deep and we can also set a bevel on this table as well. So as there's a thumb screw down here, we can turn that and be able to put a bevel on here for wanting to cut a bevel in our workpiece. A few other features on here as well. We have a dust port if we want to hook up our dust extractor to pull any dust out, as well as simple on off switch, safety switch there to turn that on and off. And as you can see here, when I turn that on, 
Uh, we get a cool little LED light here with this little flexi snake so where we can actually adjust that wherever we need it to be, wherever we want that light, we can adjust it. So love that, love that ability to, uh, to move that light and let it stay where it needs to. But also, you notice we have this on, but it's not running. And that's because of this little rocker switch here. And you'll see when I flip this over, it's running. Now that's not the on off switch. This is the on off switch, but this is basically turning it to a manual on, as you see here. And by the way, we can adjust the speed. But what this is doing, when I turn it to that place, it's activating the foot pedal. So yes, you get a foot pedal that by the way, has a nice holder right here on the saw. So you can pull that off, put your foot right here, and now you can control the saw with your foot. So if you got both hands on the work surface, push down with your foot, and now you can still move everything around as you need to. So we have a thin piece of, uh, I think this is Luan, and let's adjust this foot down. There we go. And I'm gonna turn this on the manual. Put this foot pedal back away and let's turn this all this way and something i like about this is that it kind of captures all the uh, tools and extra bits that comes with everything right here on this little holder um, so i've got a couple of allen keys in here as well as an extra blade and these blades are pretty fragile in other words they bend very easy because they're very small and there are two adapters in here because what's in this tool right now or what's in the saw is a pinned saw blade but this is for running saw blades that are not pinned as you can see here so there's no pins sticking through the ends there and what you can do is put them in here run the screw out take the blade, stick it in there. But there's a little more uh, precision that needs to be done. Let me show you where that's done. So right here on top of the saw, you see these little indentions right here. And by the way, this is also, you can set your blade tension so you can flip this up, tighten this down, clamp it back down and get additional blade tension or relieve uh, some blade tension. Anyway, let's take a look here and I'll show you how this works. So they can sit this way or they can sit this way and there's a reason for that. So I've got my blade over here on this one already, but I have not tightened it up. And so what you can do, put the blade in that one, oops. You can run that one out too. Loosen that one up and put it in here. And what this does, this sets the distance for the correct distance of the saw blade. So now that we have it set here, now I can tighten down the set screws. And now that's ready to go in my saw. So pretty cool little setup. So the Skill SS9503 is available now and runs $199 as well as it comes with a three year warranty. I think we covered about everything on each one of these tools. By the way, in addition, they also have a combination belt and disc sander as well. We didn't get our hands on that one. So where in the skill level, <laughs> skill level, anyway, where in the skill level do these tools fall? Well, I think they're definitely a DIY level or entry level pro. Uh, so definitely, you know, that opening shop, you need a drill press. This would be a great little drill press for you. Love uh, little bench top drill presses because you can set them up, you can take them down. So if you need the work table or workspace, uh, you can move them around very easy to do so. Where a floor model, not so easy to do so. And this may be big enough that this is all you'll need and that's fine. The bench grinder, eight inch bench grinder, again, I think for a typical shop, this will be more than a left for you. I, I mentioned to you that I'd love to put a wire wheel on one side. I like to have the wire wheel there for cleaning up nuts, bolts and anything else. Uh, and then as far as the uh, scroll saw 
and the bandsaw where well, you're going to know where you need that. And I think, uh, again, I think it's that kind of DIY level, which most of your scroll saws, things like that, are most uh, craft oriented anyway, or, you know, a small woodworking shop. Uh, bandsaws, obviously, they could go up to huge bandsaws as well. And this is kind of that nice entry level grade for you. Pricing, I think, is definitely uh, low enough to it's going to meet the needs of most of your entry level stuff. Um, but I know a lot of their cordless tools are definitely starting to hit that pro mark. And I just don't think all of these are at that level yet. But again, great for that entry level as well as great for that DIY. Check them out for yourself. We'll have links in the description uh, for each of these. And keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.